Here's the third video explaining the third part of tomorrow's test. And this next section is probably the biggest part of the test where we are simplifying square roots and also simplifying values with i, right? Like subtracting, multiplying, distributing with i's with imaginary values. Um, let's start with the square roots. So how do we simplify a square root? Remember, you want a perfect square number in there, all right? Now, what is a perfect square number? 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. This is definitely not a perfect square number. So the question is, could you rewrite it with multiplication to get a perfect square number? So if you're thinking 2 times 14, you're wrong, okay? Because 2 is not a perfect square, 14 is not a perfect square. So what times what is 28 where you actually get a perfect square number? Well, you could say 4 times 7. That would be a great combo. 4 times 7. Why? Because 4 is a perfect square number, all right? So all we're doing is rewriting the 28 to become 4 times 7. After all, 4 times 7 is 28. Now let's split it and say the square root of 4 and the square root of 7. What is the square root of 4? The answer is 2. What's the square root of 7? I'm going to leave it the square root of 7. And ladies and gentlemen, that is simplified. Yes, you're done. Moving on to number 10. 72. Well, I'll tell you what, um, 4 does work. 4 times 18 is 72, you know. Um, 16 also works, but then again, try to use the highest perfect square number. So don't go with 4, 4 times 18. That's going to take too long. Uh, if you think about your perfect square numbers, just to take a couple of seconds more and think which higher perfect square number actually works. So that would be uh, 36 times 2. That's the highest perfect square number. So if you go 36 times 2, and then you split the root, you will get 6 squared to 2 as your final answer. Yes, it's that easy. Let's move on to this next one. Oh, wait a minute. There's a negative in there. What does that mean? Imaginary, right? All you got to do is put an I on the outside. So think about this. Um, if you wanted to show your work, which you don't have to on the test, not this part at least, you have a negative 1 times 121. You see, that's the same thing as the square root of negative 121. And of course, you're going to split the root. So you're going to have the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 121. Okay, and we all should know that the square root of negative 1 is really i. And the square root of 121, you could actually do this. That gives you 11. So you have i times 11, which means that your final answer is 11i. That's your answer, 11i. Um, Let's uh, move on, and so, wait, before we move on, let me show you how easy this is, really. I mean, if it's a perfect square number and there's a negative in front, just take the square root and put an i on it, right? The square root of negative 121, it's 11i. The square root of negative 9, let's say the square root of negative 9, oh, that's just 3i. The square root of negative 25, oh, that's just 5i. That's simple, right? So let's move on to number 12 here because this is not a perfect square number. All right, so when we don't have a perfect square number, you want to rewrite it with multiplication to get a perfect square number. So let's start with the, the negative sign. That's just going to come out as an I on the outside. So let's just pretend it says 75, and let's work with the 75. The I is already on the outside. So we're going to have uh, I times, and we might as well split it, get a perfect square number, 25 times 3. Right? 25 is a perfect square number. You could actually do this. The square root of 25 is 5. So you have i times 5 times the square root of 3. So my answer would be 5i square root of 3. There's my answer. You could also write this as 5 square root of 3 and put the i at the end. If you do that, that's fine also. Just make sure that the i doesn't get or doesn't look like it's inside the square root. Make sure it's out here by itself. Okay. Moving on to the next one, number 13. I hope you guys remember that the power of one half is the same thing as the square root, okay? I hope you guys remember that from our notes. If you forgot, check out your notes. So you really have this square root is the same thing as the power of one half. So let me rewrite this. Instead of x to the eighth inside the square root, let me go x to the eighth to the one half power. Okay. Now, why would I want to do this? Well, because a power to a power, you multiply. And what's 8 times half? What's half of 8? It's just 4, and you're done. That's your answer. X to the fourth power. Ta-da! Piece of cake. All right, moving on. 
uh, number 14, I to the ninth. If you remember correctly from class, when we did the exercises with the I's, um, I squared is negative 1, and I to the fourth was 1. So when we think of I to the ninth, I could rewrite this as I to the fourth times I to the fourth times I. I hope you guys see that because when you multiply these, you add 4 plus 4 plus 1 and you get the 9. Now, why would I want to change them to I to the fourths? Because we should remember that I to the fourth is really 1. So you really have 1 times 1 times I. So what's your answer? That's right. It's just 1I. That's your answer right there. Because 1 times 1 is 1 and 1 times I is just 1I. Let's take a look at I to the 43rd power. Okay, so again, we're going to be using the fact that I to the fourth is equal to one. So if I think about this, I could rewrite this as I to the 40th. Now, why would I want to do that? Because I to the 40th, 40th is divisible by four, which means that I to the 40th is just going to be one. But I also need an I to the third to end up with the 43 that I have up here. So the 43, I rewrote it as 40 and 3 because 40 plus 3 is 43. Anyways, because I to the 40th is divisible by 4, you really end up with 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 10 times, which is just going to be 1. So you could just scratch that out. Now the I to the 3rd, you should remember what that is. Uh, I to the 3rd is negative I. But let's say you forgot. Let's say you forgot that I to the 3rd is negative I. Well, then you could just say, okay, what is I to the 3rd? That's really I squared, which you should know is negative 1, times I. So that's really going to be negative 1, because I squared is negative 1, times I. And that's just going to be a negative I as your final answer. So I to the 43rd is really just negative I. I hope that makes sense. Please continue uh, studying that. That will be exactly like what you see on the test. Moving on to number 17. This one's really easy. You're not multiplying. You're just combining like terms. Technically, you're distributing the minus sign first, uh, and you're really going to have 4 minus 2i minus 8 minus 5i. Now let's combine like terms. And I'm going to start with the real numbers because... On a complex number answer, you always want to write your real number first. So what is 4 minus 8? That's minus 4. And then let's combine the imaginary negative 2i minus 5i. That's like saying negative 2x minus 5x. That's negative 7x. But in this case, it's negative 7i. So the idea is you do the math exactly the way you would do it with an x. The only difference is it's an i. Now, the only catch is if you ever have an i squared, that's when it changes to negative 1. So taking a look at number 18 here, let's distribute negative 2i times negative 5. That's going to be a positive 10 with the variable i. And then negative 2i times 3i. That's going to be a negative 6. And of course, i times i is i squared. Now, we should all be uh, thinking, wait a minute, this is an i squared right there. This i squared needs to be replaced with negative 1. So I really have 10i minus 6 times negative 1. So I really have uh, 10i minus actually plus 6. When I go negative 6 times negative 1, it's a positive 6. And remember, you want your complex numbers written with your real part first and your imaginary part second. So I am going to switch these and put the 6 first and then plus 10i second. And that's my final answer for number 18 for the complex number. Let's move on to number 19. I can't believe I'm explaining the whole test for you. If you guys don't get an A, I'm going to be so upset. Okay, um, I'm going to throw up all the turkey on Thanksgiving break if you guys don't get an A. Okay, that wasn't even funny. Maybe I should delete it. No, I'm going to just keep going. Okay, so on number 19, I'm going to distribute 1 times 3, you get 3. And then 1 times uh, 4i, you're going to get positive 4i. And then 2i times 3, that's going to be a positive 6i. And then 2i times 4i is going to be positive 8i squared. Now, notice the middle terms could be combined. You're going to end up with a positive 10i. I'm only adding. I'm not multiplying, so it's not i squared. It's just 4 plus 6 is 10. 
right? And then you have the, don't forget about the I squared, that's really a negative one. So you really bring down the plus eight, but it's plus eight times negative one. And don't forget about the three that's over here in the front. So you really have three plus 10 I and then minus eight because eight times negative one is negative eight. And now you could combine the negative eight with the positive three and your final answer is gonna be negative five, the real part first, plus 10 I. There's your final uh, complex number answer for number 19. Now let's move on to number 20. And this is a great one because you have a complex number and you have the same exact complex number but the middle values changed. What does that mean? That this and this are conjugates. And when you multiply a complex number by its conjugate, it ends up uh, nicely eliminating the i's. So you end up uh, magically having a nice beautiful answer, right? Check it out. Five times five is 25. 5 times positive 7i is positive 35i. Negative 7i times positive i, I mean positive 5, I'm sorry, is negative 35i. And then negative 7i times positive 7i is negative 49i squared. Once again, the i squared part needs to be changed to a negative 1. The middle values... I already knew this was going to happen because it's a, a complex number multiplied by its conjugate. They cancel out. So what do I have? I have 25 minus 49 times negative 1. So that's really 25 plus 49 because negative 49 times negative 1 is a positive 49. And this is going to be 74 as a final answer. E equals 74. Beautiful, no more imaginary values. That's only because I multiplied a binomial by its conjugate. Moving on to this last one, uh, you cannot have an imaginary value or a complex number for that matter in the denominator. It has to be a nice number, no i's. So how do you get rid of this entire binomial? You're going to have to multiply by its conjugate. So when you think about this binomial, what's the conjugate? It's going to be 1 minus 2i. You only change the middle sign. And of course, what you do to the bottom, you do to the top, 1 minus 2i. And let's distribute on the bottom. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times negative 2i is negative 2i. And then positive 2i times 1 is positive 2i. Then positive 2i times negative 2i, that's negative 4i squared. And once again, the i squared is going to have to be rewritten as negative 1. And let me rewrite everything. Actually, let me not rewrite everything. I could ca cancel out the middle values. We knew that that was going to happen anyway. Let me bring down the 1 that's out here. There's the 1. So I really have 1 plus 4, which is 5. Now keep in mind, this right here is just the denominator. It's just the bottom part. The 5 is just the denominator. So my answer is going to have the 5 as the denominator. There's a 5 as the denominator. Now what about the numerator? Well, you need to distribute 3 times 1, you get 3. And 3 times negative 2i, that's negative 6i. Now keep in mind, you want the complex number written separately. You don't want it all together as one fraction. You want the real part first and the imaginary part second. So my answer, my final answer is going to be 3 over 5 minus... 6 over 5 with an i on the second fraction. That way it's totally separate. Your real part first and your imaginary part second. 